Hello everyone and welcome. I am Dinka Dijkstraas from ISWA and I am introducing you to today's webinar from the Decode project, focusing on enhancing plastic circularity. The Decode project works on the recycling of coated and painted textile and plastic materials and has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme. ISWA is involved in the project as the lead for the exploitation, dissemination and communication work package. And the speakers joining us today are all partners in the Decode project. Thank you for connecting with us from around the world. In a moment, we will introduce you to the speakers of this webinar and some of the presentations will be followed by a short question and answer session. And the speakers will also be able to answer the questions in the question bar. Um, so you're all encouraged to type your questions in the questions window to your right. Before handing over to our speakers, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Violia, the City of Rotterdam, Ecomando, and Ivat Messe Munich. They are ISWA's main sponsors, and we are grateful for their support. A thanks also goes out to our ISWA's Platinum members. Without the generosity of ISWA's sponsors and Platinum members, it would be hard to do what we do. I would also like to take a brief moment to introduce ISWA, as several of you joining today are not yet members. And the International Solid Waste Association Association, or ISWA, is a global independent and non-profit making association working in the public interest and it is the only worldwide association promoting comprehensive and professional waste management and the transition to a circular economy. We are open to individuals and organizations, members from the scientific community, public institutions and public and private companies from all over the world working in the field of waste management or interested in waste management. This was the only worldwide association that enables its members to network with professionals, companies and institutional representatives. ISWA's mission is to promote and develop sustainable and professional waste management worldwide. We have members from over 100 countries, which you can see in this world map, and we count on the support of our members. So if you're not yet a member, please take a moment to visit our membership page by visiting the link on the screen. You can also reach out to our membership manager, Mr. Daniel Purchase, by writing to him at dpurchase at iswa.org. We have flexible membership options with discounts for students, low-income countries, and online members. I would now like to introduce the speakers of today. Uh, first of all, Vincent will be joining us from Aimplus. Melis will be joining us from Panasonic. Aken will be presenting on behalf of Mercedes-Benz. And Ine will be presenting the Decode project on behalf of Syntex Bell. Maxime will be joining us from Rascal, and Vanessa will be presenting on behalf of CTEC. Now I will hand over to Vincent from Aplus, who will provide you with an overview of plastics recycling. The presentation will be followed by a short Q&A session, which will be moderated by Ine and Stein from Zetexville. Vincent? Hello. Hi. Thanks. Hello, good morning. Thanks for attending this uh, online event and thanks for your kind introduction. Uh, first, let me introduce my organization uh, very quickly. I'm Plus. We are a technology center with more than 30 years experience in the plastic uh, sector. Uh, in addition, we are an association with more than 650 companies, mostly from Spain and other countries in Europe and we provide our services to plus than 2,500 customers. Our main activities include the management of research, development and innovation projects, technical services, including laboratory testing and analysis. And also we are very active organizing uh, training activities, uh, technical seminars and other events related to the plastic industry. I would like to start my presentation highlighting the plastic benefits. Plastics are a wide range of synthesized materials offering mechanical strength, low weight, barrier properties, good weatherability, thermal sellability, and AC processing and design flexibility by several techniques. Thanks to these overall plastic convenient properties, that allows to increase its use in several applications, substituting conventional materials such as metal, glass, ceramics, etc. But also plastics durability, ubiquity and adoption in large volumes for some applications implies also a responsible management of waste generated to avoid environmental impacts. Uh, 
uh, regrettably, in the recent years, uh, these uh, images uh, uh, widespread broadcasted in the mass media have raised concern among society. So for all means, we need to avoid the accumulation of plastic materials, mainly plastic packaging in the oceans and in the environment. Uh, although the situation is not the same in each uh, country or region, uh, currently uh, global plastic packaging flows are largely, largely linear. That means that only an estimated 14% of plastic waste is collected for recycling and a minor, a minor 2% is uh, reduced in the same application, closing this ideally loop. Regrettably, uh, a considerable fraction of plastic waste is diverted to landfill, which is not further allowed in the European Union. Other estimated 32% fraction is uh, diverted or leaked to the environment, which is not uh, further acceptable. So that in the recent years, a new model for a circular economy has been proposed so that in the circular economy, the resources are kept in use for as long as possible with almost zero, zero waste generation. That means that in order to create an effective after use plastic economy, it is mandatory to increase the rates for reuse and recycling of the plastic uh, materials. So that uh, implies to reduce drastically the leakage of plastic into natural systems and other negative externalities, and also decouple the plastic raw materials from fossil feedstocks. In January 2018, the European Commission set up a new strategy for plastics materials in the circular economy. The objectives of this new strategy are quite ambitious and include that by 2030, all plastic packaging placed on the European market can be reduced or recycled in a cost-effective manner. Also, there is a need to promote harmonized collection and sorting schemes at a European level, increasing the recycling industry capacity to process more than 50% of plastic waste generated. There is also uh, increasing interest in investigating alternative renewable feedstocks for plastic production, promote applications and innovation on compostable and biodegradable plastic materials, and also uh, eventually this effort must uh, lead to curbing the, the waste and littering, reducing single-use plastics and microplastics pollution. Aligned with this initiative, also the Circular Plastics Alliance targets by 2025 a total 10 million of plastic recyclates will be used in the manufacture of new products. According to Plastics Europe, uh, almost uh, the total European plastic converters demand is roughly 51 uh, million tons, uh, mostly uh, dedicated to packaging, building and construction, automotive and electric Cal and electronic sectors. So that, uh, considering these uh, figures, that means that the previous target of achieving uh, 20 million tons of plastic recyclates by 2025 in order to produce new plastic materials set up a very ambitious target. Uh, the, the reality is that uh, currently plastic recyclates set up poses some limitations for open scaling. Firstly, there is a need to source large volumes of plastic waste for proper collection and recovery. Also, the, we have to bear in mind that post-consumer mixed plastic waste streams require sorting and cleaning pretreatments that can be quite costly. 
and most of the plastic products are non-monomaterials. That means that they feature complex structures in multilayered laminates, fiber reinforced parts, or assembled products. Also, in uh, plastic waste streams, uh, there might be a contamination the plastic with other materials, for example, industrial solvents or other contaminant substances. And also there is a risk of substances of concern due to the presence of additives, halogenated elements or heavy metals that are included in plastics formulations. There is also a need to uh, set up harmonized standards to assure homogeneous recyclates quality similar to virgin grades. And also uh, it is needed to set up uh, regulations or certification protocols in order to assure traceability on plastic recycling content. So within this uh, framework, uh, project, the COAT project is aimed to develop methods to separate coatings from the bulk material, ending up with easy to recycle parts and contribute to a circular economy. In the next presentations, my colleagues will be able to provide uh, further details on uh, the quad project objectives. One uh, case study in the quad project is related to plastic coated parts. Plastic substrates are coated with paints, varnishes, and lacquers in order to enhance surface properties and aesthetics appealing. Halloween, scratching resistance, good weatherability and UV resistance for outdoor applications, providing smooth surfaces with special finishing effects, such as metallizing, pearl, or iridescent, and also allows customized colored plastic products that can be tailored to the needs and desires of individual customers, which is a major trend in the industry. But there, is, there are also some disadvantages. Plastic materials show inert and low surface energy, uh, so low surface uh, energy, requiring high energy treatments, primers, or adhesion promoters to enhance wettability. Also, when using when using solvent-based paints and varnishes, these solvents attack and etch the plastic substrate and might cause swelling, softening, or the solution of the polymer. Also, uh, the, drying, the drying and curing stages at high temperatures lead to head deflection and dimensional changes that can affect the plastic part. So, the, the COAT project approach is basing on a, the bonding on demand technology by means of incorporation of triggerable additives in the coating layers and the developing of specific activation methods, batches on heating and microwaves for coating the bonding and removing of the, these coating layers from the plastic substrate. Just in a quick uh, slide, let me show you some preliminary results about the, 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 the task and the role of IMPLAS in this project that has been mainly related in the first stage in the optimization of the quad in the bonding systems at laboratory scale. Uh, within this task, we have been able to apply the, uh, the bondable primer provided by partner Rescol. In the, next, uh, in the next presentation, my colleagues will be able to provide more details on this debondable primer. And afterwards, the, the painting and color coatings and varnishes were applied onto this uh, special primer. After uh, heating activation by means of uh, infrared lamps, we were able to assess the debonding capabilities of these primers and so that the, the pint layers easily can be removed from the plastic substrate. And also other important objective of the quad project is 
to set up a mechanical recycling pilot line that will be able to deal with these inputs of plastic quartet parts that incorporate this specialty, uh, the bondable, triggerable additives that will, that will be sorted out of the, the plastic stream by means of uh, a specific optical sorting uh, equipment and methods. Afterwards, these plastic parts will be grinded in order to reduce the, the, the plastic particle size and will undergo special activation methods by means of heating or uh, infrared or microwaves in order to activate these uh, the bondable additives so that later on in a separation stage we will be able to remove this paint or vanishes squatting layers from the plastic substrate this plastic uh, substrate material will be further reprocessed in an innovative uh, extrusion technology that will allow for melt filtration of these plastic particles and also uh, further uh, remove the volatile content remaining in these plastic materials so that at the end of this uh, recycling uh, mechanical recycling uh, method we will be able to obtain thermoplastic pellets with improved quality that will be able to be reduced in the original application enhancing the, the performance of these specialty materials developed and also reinforcing the circular uh, loop objectives of this project. So this was my presentation. Uh, if there is any question, please feel free to, to raise your question and I will be pleased to, to answer you. Good morning, everyone. I will host your question and answer session today. Um, I see a question popping up from Vincent. Uh, someone is asking if the mechanical recycling pilot line is in operation in any MRF. So I think I don't. Do you see the term MRF? Uh, Some... Sorry. Uh, no, I, I, I don't fully... Ah, material recovery facility. Oh, ah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you for the, for the declaration. Uh, and no, uh, uh, actually, the, this mechanical recycling payload line is being developed in our premises. We are in the stage of defining the, the main uh, capabilities and requirements for the different states in the payload uh, line but we plan to advance in the development of the different capabilities in the next months uh, within the development of the Quad project. Yeah. And maybe a second question is, what do you do with the inks of the paints itself? Is it used as a sludge or further uh, treated? Any fine produ productions for that? Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we consider that this uh, uh, article from inks, uh, paints, uh, will be removed as, as a find. So the, the idea is in the, in the separation state to, uh, uh, to, to let's say, to, to recover, to collect these, uh, these, these finds, but uh, um, we are not considering any further treatment because we are, we are focusing on reprocessing the, 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 the thermoplastic uh, substrate. So maybe mm, there will be a, another, uh, let's say, method in order to deal with this, uh, this minor fraction. Yeah. And maybe one last question is, uh, are there any technologies for treating plastic waste from health institutions? Uh, well, I have to admit that we are uh, in the, within when the DECOD project, we are mainly dealing with uh, two case studies, uh, plastic quoted parts and quoted textiles. So um, for the, in the case of plastic materials, we are dealing mainly with automotive uh, components and also electrical electronic components. So no, not sure about if there is any, any product related to the health uh, uh, sector. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, if any other questions will pop up, we will answer them in the question or chat box directly because we need to move on with the further presentations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, the next presentation comes from Elise from Panasonic. Uh, Panasonic is the lead and use case for electronic consumer goods. 
And they provide the concrete use case of coded light switches for the DECO project and are also contributing with design and product development departments. And this presentation was pre-recorded. Melise is present here, so she will be able to answer your questions in the chat. Hi, everyone. On behalf of my company, I would like to welcome you here. Uh, my name is Melise and I'm material engineer at Panasonic Life Solutions Turkey. Uh, today, I would like to talk about our company's recycling policy and its efforts in this subject. Uh, first of all, I would like to start with that which areas of work does the Panasonic Group have? In worldwide, uh, we provide products and services for a wide range of spaces, from homes to offices and stores, uh, focusing on B2C businesses such as home appliances, uh, beauty and health, and B2B businesses such as cooling and heating for commercial use, uh, devices and energy. And in Panasonic Life Solutions uh, company, uh, from the business field of electric components, housing materials and uh, construction, we offer comfortable space and uh, enrich time from every aspect of lifestyle, including housing, uh, offices, commercial facilities and smart homes. A connected solutions company in the six priority business segments, uh, they are distribution, logistic, uh, entertainment, public, avionics, and manufacturing, uh, we provide to our customers. Uh, automotive industry solutions company uh, provide innovative devices and environmentally friendly vehicles, uh, such as electronic components, electronic materials, and uh, batteries. Uh, the company was established in uh, 1980 in Istanbul, Turkey under the name of Vico and it, uh, then it was bought by uh, Panasonic. It has uh, 100 million pieces per year switch and socket production capacity and uh, 1000 employees. It sells to more than uh, 70 countries and 35% of them are export, 65% uh, of them are the most domestic market. Also, it has lots of international standards, uh, such as a quality management system, environmental management system, information security management system, and occupational health and safety management system. Uh, moreover, uh, we have an RD center and uh, many awards, such as uh, well-known brand, environmental friendly plant awards, and super brands. Uh, so let's move on to product range. Uh, all the process from design to production of our products are performed in our company. Uh, the company produces uh, wiring devices, uh, building automation system, uh, smart meters and uh, switch gears. And you can see uh, clearly the production steps from concept design uh, to serial production in the slide. Okay, I have a given brief info about our company and now uh, I would like to talk about plastic injection in uh, Panasonic Turkey and circularity process. We have uh, 58 plastic in injection machines and uh, 34 total number of robots in production area. Uh, the brands of these machines are uh, Arbuk, Cross Mafe and Engel. And also we use various uh, plastic materials in production. These are ABS, uh, PC, PC ABS, uh, polypropylene, uh, polyamide, SNA, and uh, different master beds. Uh, we have uh, 10 and uh, 15 uh, tons of plastic raw materials usage uh, daily. Also, uh, the annual uh, production capacity of switches and uh, sockets in uh, is uh, 100 million. So uh, now we have come to recycling. Uh, approximately 10% uh, of the plastic used in production can be recycled by the company. Uh, the remaining 90% uh, of the plastic raw materials are sent to waste companies uh, for a recycling process. 10 and 30% uh, uh, of the plastic burrs are uh, reused in production daily. In addition, uh, plastic materials used in the hot runner system are uh, recycled uh, during the production. I mentioned that uh, we are an uh, environmental organization, uh, so these numbers indicate the total recycling waste in uh, year uh, 2020 and materials uh, we have saved. 
uh, we have recycled uh, 188 tons of paper and uh, 193 tons of plastic and uh, 1074 tons of metal in uh, 2020. Also, we have saved uh, water uh, storage area and energy saving. Uh, thanks to uh, our building automation system, uh, which provides significant advantages in terms of energy efficiency, heating, uh, cooling and uh, ventilation systems, uh, can be controlled online. In addition, uh, thanks to the energy analyzers uh, located at many points of our facilities, uh, system uh, conceptions are uh, closely monitored and uh, greenhouse uh, gas emissions are reduced by uh, developing efficiency increasing projects accordingly. Uh, the solar energy systems located in our industrial uh, facilities provides an uh, annual energy gain of uh, 28,000 uh, kilowatts and the energy obtained from here is uh, used for uh, hot water consumption and monthly uh, carbon emissions are reported to uh, Japan side and lastly for year uh, 2020 uh, total carbon emissions were uh, measured as uh, 4,626 tons. At this stage, I would like to go over our, our aspects uh, should be improved. Uh, firstly, uh, we should develop uh, artificial intelligence in uh, production planning. Artificial intelligence uh, assisted uh, production planning will uh, result in less energy waste. And secondly, uh, improvement of mode design. Energy loss will be reduced as a result of improved uh, mode designs, uh, and uh, plastic waste will be reduced also. Uh, thirdly, the eco design tool will be used uh, to evaluate uh, several criteria during the production design phase, and resulting in an environmental uh, sustainable product. And uh, lastly, uh, thanks to the uh, DEPA technology, uh, the problem of uh, painted plastic product uh, recycling uh, will be solved in this project. Uh, because uh, in current situation, uh, we can't recycle our uh, painted products, so it uh, causes a huge uh, plastic waste. And that concludes uh, my talk. Uh, thank you all for listening and it was a pleasure being here today. Um, thank you. So Melissa is available to answer your questions in the question box. And I would like to now hand over to Aken from Daimler. So thank you very much, Dinke. And good morning, everybody. My name is Akun Özkan, and I am one of the technical responsible in Mercedes-Benz Türk for European projects. And today I will briefly give uh, an example of Mercedes-Benz Türk's plastic circularity. First of all, our sustainability goals clarified in uh, emission 2039 vision. And this example will refer to, it's one of subtitle, a resource conservation. So, first of all, I want to tell you the uh, plastic usage increase in the vehicles during the years. And it's because plastics high strength to weight ratio, high wear and corrosion, corrosion resistance, fire and flame resistance, lightweight, and also they are relatively inexpensive solutions. And most commonly used plastics are polypropylene, polyurethane, polyamide, and PVC. However, because of some functional and uh, aesthetic requirements, they are commonly used as coated or composite. But this has some uh, disadvantages and parts may not be recyclable anymore after this uh, combination or complicate in the recycling process or recycling can be more costly or uh, it can be affected the quality and value of recycled plastics. But one of the uh, good solution to these disadvantages is recycling at design stage mindset. So 
Let me show you our uh, scope in Decode project. And here you see the bus cockpit part, which is a, a combination of polyurethane and PVC foil. Uh, while these parts are recyclable individually, uh, but this combination, because you cannot remove the upper side, is not recyclable anymore. So in this uh, decode project, we are we focused on uh, to remove the upper side and then parts will be recyclable again. So we planned to add primer between PVC foil and polyurethane. And after some uh, uh, triggerable uh, activations, the upper side will be removable and the parts will be recyclable. And lastly, uh, when it is about plastic circularity, we cannot only talk about the part in the end product, but also we need to talk about the facility management. And here you can see some of highlights that we managed or we focused in Mercedes-Benz Turk. And uh, the first point is uh, extensive uh, environmental management system is our guideline. And uh, three generation plant infrastructure is the first pilot application on green energy. And we focused also to waste management and we stopped the using uh, single use plastics and uh, solid steps towards becoming a green factory with energy production from solar panels and also with air pollution uh, control and zero waste water projects, we are now one step closer to our goals. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, if you want to uh, read more about uh, Daimler Ambition 2039 and Daimler Sustainable uh, Report, you can uh, go through this QR post or you can email me or I will be available here to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you again. And I would now like to hand over to Ine from Centexpel. Uh, Centexpel are the coordinators of the Decode project and they will be giving an introduction to Decode. Good morning again, everybody. Um, I will give you a short introduction to Decode um, as this webinar is, frame, is organized in its framework. So Decode stands for Recycling of Coated and Painted Textile and Plastic Materials. So just first some facts on Decode. So it's a European project funded within Horizon 2020 and it's coordinated by Centexbel, so by us. And we are the Belgian Collective Center for the Textiles and Plastic Processing Industry. So Decode will run for four years. It started in 2019, but it will mostly end in 2023 as we have some delay due to the Corona pandemic. Um, so we're a consortium of 17 partners with a total budget of 5.9 million euros. So here you have an overview of the whole consortium. So as you can see, we have a nice mix between end users, technology providers, research centers and organizations who are um, giving support, like for example, with exploitation and dissemination, conducting life cycle analysis and life cycle costing studies. What is the main challenge is actually that coated textiles and painted uh, plastic items are very abundant in our daily lives in various application areas. I just named here a few examples like in the textile world we have all these coated garments, we have all kinds of bags but also like carpets and so on. From the plastics industry we are mostly looking at automotive parts like the bus part from Daimler, a car part from Meyer, but also for example the switches and sockets from Panasonic. So why are the coatings or paints present? It's actually to enhance the performance, like for example, as Vincent already said, to protect the bulk material from UV radiation. It can give additional functionalities, for example, improving scratch resistance, but it can also simply improve the aesthetics of the item. 
On the other hand, these coatings and paints hamper the recycling process at end of life, meaning that these items are nowadays being either incinerated or landfilled. So within Decoat, we actually want to remove these coatings and paints to be able to recycle the bulk material. And this remover is actually now the missing puzzle piece to have a circular approach here. So here you have the overall concept of decode. So it's quite detailed, but the main important thing that you need to see is that you are actually going for a full closed loop. So a really full circular approach here. So the first step at end of life of a good is, for example, the disassembly here uh, demonstrated with this uh, rucksack. So actually, um, this disassembly step is not a focus of decode, as already some technologies exist for this. But nevertheless, the technologies which are being developed within decode can also assist in this disassembly step. So then actually after a sorting step and a grinding step, we come to the core of the decode project. Is then that's the step where we actually debond the coating or the paint or the varnish from uh, the bulk material. And after that, we will do some steps to separate the coating paints from the bulk material and re reprocess the materials again. So if we look at the removal of the coatings and paints, we have two main strategies. The first one is that we do a debonding via a triggerable coating. So in this case, we actually need design for recycling as you need to incorporate these additives already during the production phase of your item. A second approach is solvation of the coating. So there we use the CreaSolve process from partner Fraunhofer IVV. And there we are actually dissolving um, the coating or the paint. Um, and this can be done on conventional products. So you don't need to add any additional materials. Of course, you can do some design for recycling by adding easier dissolvable coatings in this case. So here you have a schematic overview of our concept of the triggerable coatings. So actually what we do is um, between the substrate and the top coatings or the top paints, um, we put in this primer layer, um, especially design triggers. So these triggers will be present during the use phase of the item, but at end of life, we can trigger them either thermal via heat or steam or via microwave. And by triggering them, they will enable the separation of the substrate and the top coat. And this substrate can go for recycling. Recycling the top coat at present is still quite difficult. Um, so this is also not a focus of decode. So here you have an overview of the different types of triggers we are looking at. So we have core shell materials, which are triggered upon heat. We have super absorbing polymers, which need moist uh, for their activation. We have magnetic particles and CNT at silica particles who are also triggered by, via microwave. And we have the indar inside technology from Rescol who needs heat upon activation and will be explained more in detail later on by Maxime. So we have within the code four main demonstrator cases. So we are uh, producing a bike bag from Rodé. We are looking at the switches and sockets from Panasonic. From Mercedes-Benz Turk, we have the bus part. And from Meyer, which is a tier one to the automotive industry, we have uh, these, this car part. And actually, we'll be doing research on all these items from really up lab scale up to pilot scale. So the pilot scale, which was presented by Aimplus before, and there we actually want to show um, the feasibility of the circular approach. If you would like to know more on the Decode project, please visit our website. Um, it's always updated with the latest news, um, the new events we are organizing and so on. So if you would like to know more, please stay tuned or subscribe to our newsletter. And I would like to finish off by saying that in nature, nothing is created and nothing is destroyed, but everything is transformed. And this is actually also what we are doing within Decode. We are transforming current waste into new valuable materials. So this was very, in a nutshell, uh, the concept of the Decode project. And thank you. Thank you, Ine. Um, I would now like to hand over to Maxime from Ruskel. Uh, the presentation will also be followed by a short Q&A which will be moderated by Ine and Stein from Syntax Bell.
So good mo good morning, everyone. Um, I'm uh, very happy to have this opportunity opportunity to present our uh, debonding on demand technology, which is called uh, Indar Primer. Um, first, a uh, few slides regarding our company. So we are a group of uh, SMEs uh, located in uh, Bordeaux, uh, close to so southwest of France, uh, city of wine, you know. Uh, uh, some figures, so 16 million euro turnover uh, last year, more than uh, 150 employees, a strong investment uh, per year uh, regarding uh, equipment and te technology development, internal development, uh, more than uh, 1,000 customers and a uh, large uh, lab surface area. Um, our activities uh, are, we're offering different range of services like testing on mainly on polymers, but also on metals. We have a very strong fire testing lab for aeronautics, uh, nice uh, mechanical testing labs, uh, static are and dynamical and everything about uh, physical chemical analysis. Uh, we also provide R&D services uh, on the innovation studies, contractual and uh, multi-partnerial like decode R&D expertise, as well as services on auditing training training on bonding, which is our uh, um, historic uh, know-all and expertise, machining in SMB and also custom manufacturing. And last but not least, we have a range of products we have developed um, in adhesives like structural adhesives, debonding on demand in the shape of uh, adhesive and also primers for stripping and also deponding, and technical coatings like um, bio-based paint, uh, functionalized paint, soil gel coatings, conductive uh, coatings, laser coatings. Uh, our sites are located in the southwest of France, uh, so close to Bordeaux, the head office, and then we have an uh, endurance and structure testing lab in uh, Rochefort, close to La Rochelle and uh, match factoring sites uh, in close to Bordeaux for matching and assembly and a uh, uh, coaching and uh, formulation production site uh, in the south uh, in the center of France so uh, site number four uh, our business share is well balanced between uh, aerospace uh, medical uh, devices uh, leather industry uh, with a large range of products and other industries now let's go to the core of the presentation uh, directly uh, dedicated to uh, focus on what we are doing in, within Decode. So within Decode, we are developing uh, our, uh, one of our debondable technology, which is uh, the Indar Primer. This is thermally triggered primer uh, for uh, on-demand uh, debonding or stripping. Uh, it's a patented technology, so the idea is to apply the coating on any substrate before further coatings or bonding. And then you have the service life, which is um, unaltered, so very uh, similar to what we would have with, uh, without the technology. And then once you want to do the debonding or stripping, you have to thermally activate in the range of 100 to 20, uh, 200 degrees C. Of course, the activation temperature is tuned to the bonding or coating specifications, mainly with uh, no degradation on the substrate, uh, which is what we target for pr further processing, recycling, or reuse. And then after the triggering, you can separate the coating or the parts in case of bonding. You clean the parts very easily, and then you can do the maintenance or upgrade or recycling. Uh, a few, um, another view of what I was just explaining before. So for bonding, you have the substrate bonding with the adhesive and the primer located on the substrate you want to debond. And can be, of course, in case of bonding substrate, prime uh, of coating, sorry, sorry, substrate, primer, and coating instead of adhesive and substrate. And then you have the thermal activation and you have the triggering, mechanical triggering after heating which induce um, weakening of the primer layer and easy disassembly of the coatings on top or the substrate bonding on top. Uh, what uh, we offer is an irreversible deboning. It means that you cannot, after uh, eating, uh, you cannot reuse the part because they are completely weakened. Uh, it's uh, one shot. Um, 
The features on the primer, so no activation during service life, very high mechanical properties when we consider bonding. We are over 15 NPA, which is very high. After the bond, after triggering, the low residual strength is uh, very, very low, so uh, one uh, below 1 NPA. So for coatings, it's over, uh, much more interesting because we are offering very high strengths in terms of adhesion. It's compatible with uh, all adhesive or coating types, and you can uh, select the surface you want to debond. In case of stripping, it's quite interesting because you can have a selective stripping based on the location uh, you you use for the, the stripping uh, stripable coating. And uh, for the, the post cleaning, you will see that it's uh, very easy. So it's a one component solvent based so far where we can work uh, later on a water-based version. Sickness and dry thickness is 15 to 20 microns. So typical thickness range of any paint. And application is quite a right because it can be spray, brush, or um, automatized spraying or screen printing. Drying time can be reduced to below one minute with higher lamps and thermal activation, so in the range I've just mentioned before. Um, so regarding applications, you can think for bonding replacement of worn parts, for stripping, replace, uh, um, stripping of old paints, upgrade of components. For enough life, of course, you understood that it's uh, you make sorting and recycling easier, recovering of virgin or almost virgin material. For bonding, you can use it for matching, proof test, bonding of sensors as temporary fixing. And in terms of eco design, it's, as you understood, it's quite interesting, especially for bonding, because uh, when you consider bonded assembly, you have a very limited amount of adhesive, which is locking a large amount of material. If you consider the tailgate, automotive tailgate uh, on the picture below, you have 2% of adhesive on the global mass of the assembly, which is locking 98% of the total mass. So you need uh, the reversibility in the adhesive to have uh, easier recycling and sorting of the multi-material assembly. Uh, regarding decote, now uh, we have several use cases. So automotive painted parts uh, with Meyer, uh, we want to strip the paint layers uh, and recover the uh, uh, virgin uh, thermoplastic. Uh, the PU form cockpit parts from Mercedes Benz presented just before. Um, so the idea is to remove easily the PVC fall from the PU form and have a better recycling, uh, at least possibility to recycle and coated textile with Vaudet and Sentex Vel, so the idea is to strip the coatings from the fabric. For the automotive painted parts, so I, I would just present you a very uh, quick view of uh, Lambrezot. So you can see on the left the picture of the painted part. So it's ABS painted with different layers of automotive paints classic from uh, the uh, uh, automotive. We have very nice addition at the beginning. And then um, once we apply the heat, 150 degrees C for um, less than five minutes, and it can be improved, of course, uh, we can have a very nice blistering of the old paint layers and easy uh, removing with light mechanical abrasion and then solvent cleaning afterwards. And you can easily achieve the very clean IBS plates, uh, easy to recycle afterwards. Uh, now we're working on scale up with large number of coated plates Adding an assessment of the stripping and the recycling potential as presented by Vincent. Uh, for the uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, use case, so we got uh, cockpit parts or um, directly uh, manufactured with a primer, uh, thanks to Mercedes-Benz. They cut them in slices and then we tested the addition with uh, ISO 4624, and it was quite nice regarding the reference material with no primer. And then we debonded the parts. You can see on the left picture, from the top to the bottom, you apply to it, and you can see the, um, the peeling, the self-peeling, self-stripping of the PVC foil. So it's easy to remove the whole PVC foil from the PU strip. Uh, and you can see on the bottom picture on the right that you can easily clean the blue, uh, light blue area with solvent. So um, it's nice, uh, promising results uh, to think about the possibility to re recycle on one side the PVC and on one side the PUL uh, form. Now we are working on the flat samples produced by uh, Mercedes and its supplier, and uh, we are doing uh, Mercedes Benz will do. 
uh, with the test uh, results we will share uh, FEA uh, um, for the analysis of the mechanical behavior and aging will be considered. Um, next one uh, is the textile application. So we applied coating on PS fabric and the, we got eye adhesion before it triggering. We made uh, for that a custom pill test comparing with the primer and without the primer and then after it 150 degrees C for this first uh, series of tests we got easy peeling of the coating layer. Uh, progress update, now we're working on the compatibility with processing equipment and conditions and we will continue the characterization of the coating test style and the cleaning protocol. Uh, so that's it for our results. Uh, you got my contacts, uh, so please do not hesitate to contact me either for stripping or easy deponing and uh, we'll be happy to, to discuss with you about any collaboration. Thank you. Hey, Maxime, I see one question popping up right now. Um, the question is if off-gassing in relation to VOCs have been considered tested. Um, so the primary solvent based on, we know that we are okay with uh, most um, VOC regulations uh, regarding primer uh, applications. Uh, when we do the triggering, uh, we don't have um, off-casting or out-casting um, uh, issues. So if, if this is a question for the triggering, there is no issue. But of course, since you are eating materials, you always have to consider uh, the question. Because the materials by themselves, there are different surrounding material because they are eating may have some outgassing, but there is no specific outgassing due to the primer. Okay, thank you. That was the only question so far. So, thank you. Thank you both. Um, I would now like to welcome Vanessa from CTAC for the final presentation of today, which will also be followed by a short Q&A. Um, so, Vanessa, over to you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, for the introduction. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the, the complete assessment that we have carried out during the code project in order to characterize the mechanical properties of uh, the final recycled plastic. Uh, so uh, first of all, please let me introduce uh, our company uh, very quickly. So CITAG is a research center located in the northwest of uh, Spain. Uh, we, we are more than uh, 800 uh, engineers working there uh, with 70% uh, of international activity and we work uh, very close to the industry uh, of, of the area uh, with uh, half of our uh, clients uh, are, are OEMs or uh, um, uh, car uh, manufacturers. Uh, we are devoted to, uh, mainly to the automotive industry. Uh, so uh, it's a, a nice picture of uh, our facilities uh, where we, we are able to see uh, that uh, we focused uh, on uh, um, materials and processes in engineering and uh, also our uh, core is uh, the, our laboratories. So the testing facilities that include, uh, for example, uh, battery testing, uh, passive safety uh, tests, and uh, all the, the material validation uh, that it's needed to validate uh, almost any kind of uh, system and subsystem uh, for, for the automotive industry and also for uh, related uh, uh, sectors. Um, so uh, this is why our role in uh, the code uh, was to uh, perform all the batteries, uh, the, the, the test campaign uh, to to characterize the materials. So, uh, as uh, my my colleagues uh, have uh, already presented, uh, this is the, uh, the the steps, the process in the code. So we start with uh, the, the coated uh, parts uh, that include uh, modified pr uh, primers or coatings that include uh, triggers that uh, um, are activated by different uh, stimulus, for example, heating, uh, moisture, uh, microwaves, etc., in order to remove this uh, this coating. Uh, so, 
In all these processes, there are several factors that can impact the final properties of the recycled materials. The, the, the first one is uh, the aging itself. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the parts are recycled after uh, the in the end of life, after years of use, uh, exposed to different uh, uh, conditions, to infrared, to uh, uh, changes in temperatures, and so on. So uh, uh, the the part is already aged and already damaged for all this exposure. Uh, it's not like the virgin material. Another factor is the, the bonding process that we are including in, in the code. So this exposure to, I don't know, uh, yes, microwaves or uh, heating peaks uh, can also damage in, in certain ways the, the final properties. So we have to assess that. Another factor is the remaining coating impurities because it's impossible to have a, a purely efficient system with uh, 100 uh, removing uh, of, of the coating. So uh, there is always little impurities of the coating remaining in, in the plastic. And uh, these uh, impurities can affect also the performances of the recycled material. And uh, finally, the, the recycling cycles it, uh, itself. I mean, it's not the same to recycle the, the parts uh, once than uh, twice or uh, several times. So we have also to, to assess that in order to ensure that uh, this approach guarantees a circularity uh, at the end. So uh, to assess all these factors, we have designed a design of experiment that take into account all these factors uh, and isolate them uh, just to know the effect of each one in the final properties. So the first step is to assess um, the effect of the, the amount of recycled material in, at the end, and also the number of reprocessing cycles. In step two, it was uh, where we, we had a, control, uh, a controlled uh, amount of uh, coating impurities uh, in order to see uh, how the mechanical properties are affected. And uh, in the step three, we have uh, assessed the, the effect of uh, the debonding processes uh, carried out in, in the code. So I'm going to present the, the results, uh, mainly focused on impact strength and tensile modulus. So this is uh, the, the first step uh, is an example of uh, three cycles with 15% uh, of recycled content, but we, we carry out that with all the combination of uh, recycled amount and uh, reprocessing cycles. And this is are the results. So we assess two use cases, the automotive use case, which uh, use ABS, and the electronic use case, which use ABS-PC. And regarding the tensile modulus, you can see that, strangely enough, we don't have a, a, a huge impact uh, of the, this property uh, due to, to the recycling, uh, both for, for the amount of recycled content or uh, the number of cycles. So, uh, there are vari variability in, on, on the data, but uh, the, the first column is the reference, so the virgin material, and you can see that we are reaching uh, very good results in, in this sense. Uh, it's not the same with the impact strength. Uh, the impact strength uh, is uh, uh, impacted by uh, the number of reprocessing cycles, but not for the amount of recycled content. Uh, you can see uh, in, in the first block of columns uh, the result with 15% uh, of, uh, of recycled content. And uh, in, in the, the right side, uh, the results with 100 of recycled content. And you can see that we have almost the same uh, the comparable results in terms of impact. But um, uh, if we uh, increase the amount of recycling cycle, uh, the reprocessing cycles, the impact strength uh, reduces uh, very uh, clearly uh, for both ABS and ABS-PC. Uh, so it's something that we have to take into account that uh, uh, an only a unique uh, reprocessing cycle, it's perfectly okay. We remain with this exactly the same properties. But uh, after that, with uh, um, the, the second reprocessing cycle and, and so on, 
uh, we were at risk to reduce too much the impact strength. Regarding the coating impurities, so as I mentioned before, we, we had a controlled amount of uh, coating in our testing campaign, and we see the, the results uh, also with um, tensile modulus and impact strength. So regarding the tensile modulus, uh, there is a, a slight effect on, uh, on this property with a, a, a variability of data um, that increases with the amount of impurities. Uh, but in the case of ABS, uh, it's quite stable. It's, uh, it's um, sorry, in the case of ABS-PC, it's quite stable. Uh, there is uh, almost not um, variation in, in the tensile modulus. Uh, ABS is more sensitive in, in this sense. <clears throat> Regarding the impact strength, uh, as for the recycling uh, studies, we see that there is an impact. Uh, if you increase the amount of coating impurities, you decrease the impact strength. And it's uh, quite clear in, in those graphs uh, that uh, um, after 3% of uh, coating impurities, uh, there is a significant loss in properties. Um, for example, in the graphs, uh, we set an example for, uh, for example, if we want to keep 90% of the reference strength, it means that uh, for ABS, we need to remove at least 90% uh, of coating impurities. And uh, for ABS-PC, we need to remove at least 80% of, uh, of the coating. Uh, so this is um, a measure of uh, the needed efficiency for the decode uh, deponding systems. So we need to remove uh, almost all uh, the coating at the end of life. We also study the impact of different uh, debonding systems. So this is uh, a summary of uh, all the triggers uh, and debonding systems used in the code. So first, uh, the creosolve, uh, which uh, that uh, implies uh, chemical baths, but uh, also exposure to heat, uh, to microwaves, and uh, the, the indirect process done by, by Ruskol and exposed by Maxim. Um, so, regarding the tensile modulus, there is a, a slight effect uh, in ABS. ABS is more sensitive in terms of tensile modulus, uh, but it's not. Uh, it's more significant um, with uh, with heat. So it's also due to the aging of of the material. Mm -hmm. Uh, regarding the ABS-PC, uh, it's a very stable material. We don't have any effect due to the bonding systems. And uh, strangely enough, in this case, impact is not uh, affected by the debonding systems. It's the, the most uh, stable uh, property. For both ABS and uh, ABS-PC, we reach uh, very good results uh, in terms of uh, impact strength, so no concerns in that sense. So this is the summary of the results. Uh, as uh, I just said, um, the impact strength is the, the key property for um, uh, regarding the, the, the recycle content and the reprocessing cycles and also the remaining uh, coating, the, the coating impurities. Uh, but it's OK for the debonding processes. And uh, the tensile strength is mostly OK. Uh, but uh, has um, been affected by uh, some demonic systems, not too much. It's not uh, a very big concern. But uh, the, the, there is like um, a, a compromise that we, we need to study uh, this loss of properties uh, and um, choose the better path and uh, the, better, uh, the, the, the best application for these recycled materials at the end. We also uh, assess the coating performances because uh, as we, we modify the coating with these triggers, uh, it means that uh, we are at risk that the, the bonding process starts before the end of life due to the environment, the aging. So uh, we want to be sure that uh, the, the coating is uh, stable 
uh, easily removed, but only with the proper uh, triggers and the proper temperature, not during the life of uh, the part. So to um, check that, we make a, an aging test, uh, very demanding uh, for both automotive uh, use case and uh, electronic use case. We exposed different uh, samples to this uh, aging, and uh, after that, we performed the cross-hatch test to see if um, the, the coating is okay and uh, it's still uh, performing well. And the tests uh, are okay in both cases. So uh, it means that the, the coating, the blocked in, in the coat, uh, it's able to stand uh, uh, the requirements for both industries and uh, it's uh, removed only at the end of life of the product. Uh, we assess also the aging uh, of, uh, of the virgin material to reproduce uh, this loss of properties uh, due to, to the years of exposure uh, of, of the part uh, to, to different uh, environments. And we see that, uh, of course, there is an impact on the properties due to that. Uh, we compare in the graphs the, the effect of uh, aging compared to the effect of uh, one reprocessing cycle. And you can see that aging is more damag uh, damaging than uh, the, 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 the recycle process itself. Uh, so uh, we need to assess uh, that for each uh, industry, uh, which is the um, the properties of uh, the age uh, parts uh, before uh, starting the, the recycle process, because it's something that we have to take into account also uh, in order to choose the proper application uh, for the recycled material. Uh, there is also an impact on the impact strength, of course. Uh, also more, uh, more um, obvious than for the recycling. So aging is a key factor. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, we have performed a comprehensive assessment of the mechanical properties of, uh, of uh, all the recycled materials. And it's something that is crucial in order to reach the circularity. Uh, if you want to choose the best um, application for the recycled material, you need to uh, have a clear overview of uh, the mechanical performances of, of those materials, of course. Also, uh, we can conclude that ABS and ABSPC are stable materials, uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, much more stable than we have expected at uh, the beginning of the project, in fact. Uh, so, uh, although the, the impact strength is uh, the most affected property, and uh, so it can uh, affect the, the selection of the of the final use for these recycled materials. Uh, also, that uh, it's obvious uh, after uh, our studies uh, um, regarding the the coating impurities that uh, it's mandatory to remove properly the coating in, in order to uh, have a, a good uh, recycled material. We need uh, that to keep good performances. So uh, the purpose of the coat is uh, to, to answer this, uh, this question, to give, a, to give an option to do that. Uh, most of the debonding methods explored in the codes don't affect the, the mechanical properties, uh, so it's a, a good path to, to reach uh, this goal. And uh, the modified coatings are debonded at the end of life using the proper triggers, but uh, they are able to keep the resistance uh, during the aging, during the, uh, due to external agents during the use of the parts. So, uh, it's uh, also okay to uh, um, reach the, the, the very demanding um, requirements for both automotive and electronic use case. So this is all for my presentation. Thank you for your attention and uh, you have um, my, my contact uh, if you have uh, further questions, of course. Thank you very much. Concerning the 
questions so far? I did not receive any. I know we see someone's typing for the moment. Maybe. Okay, just to thank us. <laughs> so and there are no further questions for you, Vanessa, for the moment. Thank you. Okay, then that uh, basically concludes our um, uh, webinar today. Um, I would like to thank you all for joining. Um, for more information about the Decode project, you can check out our website. Uh, you can follow our new, uh, check out our newsletter and uh, follow us on social media. Um, that's essentially all. So thank you for joining. <laughs>